Hey guys, welcome in for 30 books in 30 weeks, week 27 out of 30. Mm -hmm. I cannot even hardly believe that we're this far in um, and it's coming to a close and I'm kind of sad. So um, as you guys come on in, feel free to invite some people into a very interesting conversation this week that we are going to have about sex, sexuality, sensitivity, society, all those things kind of rolled into one as we highlight this week's book, Fifty Shades of Grey. And so it's interesting because I'm sure um, for those of you who have been following along, you know that this is a personal development journey for 30 books in 30 weeks and we've invested the last 26 weeks in various personal development books. And so you're probably, you may be asking yourself, how the hell does Fifty Shades of Grey turn into personal development? And I'm going to share that with you this week as well. I'm going to actually share that with you. Hey, James, welcome. I'm actually going to share that with you guys as well. We're going to dive into that tonight. Um, so as you come in, invite some people into the conversation. Share the video out if you'd like. Um, if you're catching it on a replay or on one of the other platforms, thank you for taking the extra step and making the extra investment to be a part of the Ultimate Power team. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Marcy Batiste, your Ultimate Power Coach, America's number one reality-based success and recovery trainer. And tonight we're talking about sex. So, um, again, Fifty Shades of Grey, you may be asking, how does that fit into personal development? This is supposed to be a personal development journey, um, a discovery mission, um, and how has this particular book um, changed me? Um, it hasn't really changed me an awful lot, but it changed how I viewed, how society views sex and sexuality and their level of sensitivity as it relates to the subject matter of sex and sexuality. Um, and so, what I mean by that, um, when, so this came out as a book first, it's now um, a three part, it's a trilogy book, um, there's three parts to it, it's Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades something and Fifty Shades Freed. So I have all, I have the whole series, um, and then it was made into a movie series, right? So this is what I want to talk about tonight as it relates to this book and how this relates to personal development and more importantly, how it relates to how we feel about ourselves, our own intimate desires, and our ability to, or our comfort with, expressing ourselves as it relates to sex and our sexuality. And in comparison to what society thinks is appropriate or is, um, you know, not taboo or whatever the case may be. So a lot of us inhibit um, our own personal desires as it relates to sex and sexuality uh, because of external factors and things that society tells us. This is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad, this is healthy, this is unhealthy. And so this book in particular, um, and I focused on this book out of the three because it was the first. And so let me go back and take you back to when um, this book first came out. If you're not familiar with Fifty Shades of Grey, it is a book about um, bondage and submission. Um, it is a love story in some sorts. It's an education in other sorts as to what BDSM is all about, what bondage and submission is all about, um, what it means to be a dominant, what it means to be a submissive. Um, and so those are all language. Hey, Josiah, um, those are all languages um, and terminologies. If you say BDSM, some people are like, oh shit, like I'm so uncomfortable right now. Um, and they have the worst case scenario picture in their head. And it doesn't have to be that way. And so I want to take you back to when this book first came out. And so it came out as a book um, I, within, not, I don't know how long it became, a number one bestseller it became a number one bestseller the conversation like all the teachers are reading it the, the soccer moms are reading it um, I mean it's just catching fire I was like oh my god have you read it have you read it have you read it um, women all over the globe are like oh my gosh I want me a Christian Gray Christian Gray is the lead 
male character in the book. And Anastasia is his um, female counterpart, or the lead character um, in the book. And Christian is this um, high-powered yeah. mogul mm -hmm. executive um, who can buy, go, do anything he wants. He's got all the money in the world, private helicopters and you know jets and all this kind of stuff. Um, and he meets this young girl out of college. She comes in to interview him and um, he's immediately taken with her. And so he finds out where she's working, um, goes to visit her there and introduces himself. One thing leads to another. They start seeing one another and part of Christian's thing, hey Dinga, um, hey Michael, part of Christian's thing is to um, have um, his sexual counterparts sign an agreement, sign a contract. The contract is for dom submiss, dominant submissive um, relationship. And so the contract lays out everything that's appropriate, everything that they can expect in the relationship, everything that, um, you know, his expectations. And so, of course, it's his contract, so it is to his benefit, but part of the dom-sub relationship is if you're going to be someone's dominant, you are expected to take care of your sub. So that's a whole other story. It's a lesson in a whole other, whole other realm not what we're here to discuss, but it's important for you to know that, to understand the significance of the contract. So he gives Anastasia an opportunity to review the contract. They come to negotiation. She ends up, long story short, signing the contract. Contract is for her to become Christian sub. Um, he's the dominant. And so basically what he says goes as this thing called a red room, which is where he um, goes to have sexual um, experiences and I'm gonna call them sexual experiences because they go beyond what many people would consider as the norm and so it tests your levels of um, comfort so when we talk about how does society look at sex how does society view sexuality um, this book tested that and so it tested it from a standpoint of you have all of these moms who have um, and I say moms and men also read it but you have a number of individuals with a very tunnel vision view of sex and sexuality and certainly limited experience with BDSM, the Dom Sub, you know, any of that whole lifestyle, those lifestyle choices. So they view the book when the book came out as hot. They viewed Christian Grey as the ultimate boyfriend. They viewed every woman wanted them a Christian Grey in their life. And um, the book it just takes off. Everybody's got to have it. They're waiting for the next one to come out. It's so hot. It's so sexy. It's steamy. It's la it's labeled mommy porn, um, which is like a like a low key soft term for um, just you know a little, a little bit more extreme sexuality, right? Um, then the movie comes out, and the movie upset the entire apple cart as it relates to how society views sex and sexuality and so that's why I titled this this video the way I did because society's view on sex sexuality and how sensitive society is affects what we feel we can and can't do what we feel is right or wrong um, versus you know if something interests you sexually um, or you're into a certain thing shouldn't have to be ashamed of who you are just because society doesn't view it the same way and so to put it all into perspective for you when the movie came out suddenly you had people who were you know raving about this book and it's hot and it's steamy and it's romantic and it's oh my god like you, uh, that's the relationship of my dreams to this is abuse he's abusive um, it's domestic violence um, what got lost in the shuffle here let me talk first about how it got lost well this is what got lost in the shuffle what got lost in the shuffle was it was an agreed upon contract she had every chance at any given moment to opt out she had the opportunity to not sign to begin with she had the opportunity to edit and what she did and change things that made her uncomfortable to bring it into a format that is comfortable for her that got overlooked 
And so what happened was people who had originally viewed the book as um, hot and steamy and sexy and romantic and now is viewing it as um, hardcore porn. Um, they're viewing it as abuse. It's a it's a it's a detriment and a slander against women. Um, and for all of you guys who know me, I'm a domestic violence advocate. I'm not going to support something that I feel is in not in alignment with women's choices and women's safety. And so one of the things that you have to understand about that lifestyle is safety's first. Safety always comes first. And you know, that's another thing that gets lost in the picture. How did that happen? It happened because when they read the book, they read it from their realm of perception. They, re they read it from their perspectives on sex and sexuality. They read it from their level of sensitivity. And then they could make up the story how they wanted in their mind. I mean, that's as a writer, you create the picture but it's up to you give the you give people the framework as a writer it's up to the reader to complete the picture and so what happened was they read the book and they completed the picture as it's sexy it's romantic it's hot it's steamy it's romantic i want to be i want to be anastasia steel i need me a christian gray in my life that's what i want that's what i want then they saw the movie and they're like oh shit that hold it wait they didn't realize what spanking look could look like they didn't realize what a spreader bar was. They didn't realize the the dom sub submissive requirements in some situations. Um, and so then all of a sudden they perceive it as to be abuse. Because what it did was it took away, by the movie took away from them their perception of sexuality. It took away from them where they could take their experience with sex, sexuality, um, alternative lifestyles, and that's really what this is, is an alternative lifestyle. They, it took that away from them and said, mm -mm, we're going to blow your whole popsicle up because this is what you think it looks like. This is what it really looks like. And it was a completely different take, a completely different spin. People were really struggling to stomach um, some of the scenes in the movie. And so that's what I want to talk about. And that's how this book is personal development. This experience, sex, sexuality, society's view on it, how sensitive we are about it, how everything has to be in the dark, how everyone's afraid to talk about it, but we're all doing it. Most people have, I mean, I, I mean, anybody you know and kids, you know they're having sex. So it's like, it's not this huge, massive secret that we want to portray that it is, but then we get all sensitive and get all bent out of shape when it doesn't look like what we think that it should look like. And that's the part I want to talk about this week when we dive into this book and we dive into some of the subject matter of the book. So I wanted to bring you guys kind of up to speed today, share with you what the book is for this week, and then just give you a heads up. We're going, we're going in this week. I figured we got a couple weeks left in 30 books in 30 weeks. We're not about to sugarcoat it. We're not about to slow down. If anything, we're taking it up a notch and we're going to talk about sex this week. We're going to talk about things that make people uncomfortable. We're going to talk about society sensitivity levels and how other people's viewpoints and other people's society sensitivity points affect how we view ourselves as sexual beings, particularly as women, what we feel is appropriate based on you know, our upbringing and, and our environment and, and our belief systems. And we're, we're going all in on all that. So stay tuned. It's going to be a great week. I cannot wait to talk about this book. I can't wait to continue our discussion about the movie. And I can't wait to talk about and help you all see how society's sensitivity affects our sexuality. So that's, that's the word for today. I'm out of here. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you share this video out. If you think that somebody might be interested in the subject matter this week, please share the video with them. Share the link with them. It'll be up on my YouTube. There's a link to the YouTube. Um, and then I'll see y'all back here tomorrow night. As always, thanks for living life on Mars and being part of the mm -hmm. ultimate power team. I will talk to y'all tomorrow evening.